everyone. This is Marin, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Angela. You've got episode 119, your guide to non-traditional homeschool resources. We're going to get to that in just a few minutes, but first we want to say hello to all of our listeners. So great to be back. Um, we're glad you're here. If you're new here, welcome. Mm-hmm. We're so glad you're here. Um, we are here to help you feel good about what you're doing and who mm-hmm. you are, because who you are is who your kids need. Exactly. Y- your kids need you to be you and not um, the kind of homeschool parent you might see uh, on Instagram or Facebook or in your neighborhood or at your co-op. Um, they need you to be you. And so we're here to encourage you to do that. Exactly. We're here to uh, encourage you to, um, like Angela said, find out what works best for you and your kids. Not necessarily do more, be more, buy more, but maybe it may even mean doing less, Mm, buying less, um, you know, looking around less at what's going on, you know, with other people Mm. and um, just really thinking about well, how is this going to work for me? How is this going to work for my kids? Yep. Um, so yeah. And so that's why we started this podcast because we needed to hear it and we wanted to have a community of people who need that too. And so we can help each other out here. <laughs> Definitely. And a special hello to our Patreon supporters. If you are interested in a smaller, deeper community, mm-hmm. Um, and extra episodes, you can go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Yes. And since it's the end of the summer, I just want to put in one more plug for uh, getting our name out there on Instagram. We Our goal is to get to 10K by the end of this year. And because of you, we are on a roll. So thank you so much. And we we want more. We want more of that. We want a, more of a community. We want to find people who are interested in um, like w- what we were just talking about, um, doing all those things for home for our homeschool friends. And um, so if, when we get the 10K, we get to do that uh, swipe up on uh, stories, Instagram stories. And we're so excited about that. Probably. <laughs> too excited probably more than we should be probably more than we should be but there's something we we love to have we love to have this goal so it's exciting it's fun if you know of anybody who might benefit from hearing all of these messages that we have built up over the years and want to continue hearing these messages um we're here for you and so give them our name and uh have them find us on instagram yeah we'd love to have you share our podcast definitely definitely all right um so angela it's the beginning of the school year it's the beginning of the school year (laughs) for many of us i mean we all do it differently but for lots of us we're starting out you have a big change this year for school we have a big change we have a big change and i haven't really talked about it on this podcast Mm -hmm. much i've talked about it um on instagram a little bit and for sure in patreon our patrons have heard my Mm -hmm. saga or not saga (laughs) but my process oh yeah (laughs) this year and um so I have my oldest is actually going to public school this year, mm-hmm. um, which is a big change for us. She um, has homeschooled from the beginning. We've we've homeschooled from the beginning, but yeah. she is in ninth grade this year, and she really wanted to try out school. She really wanted to um, experience it. Yeah, and um, I got to be honest. When she first uh, told me about this, I was. Uh, <laughs> shocked and sad. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah, just say for sure. It was really hard for me to um, to digest this information because I had envisioned us like homeschooling the whole way through, and um, you know, I going didn't on want... trips, like having yeah. the freedom. Oh yeah, I love things. that, and yeah. just like the family togetherness yeah. and like not being super busy. I wanted that forever, and I have a hard time like changing and moving mm-hmm. on you know yeah and yeah so- and it's hard because I think <laughs> it's really difficult to not to to not have this become kind of part of your identity I mean you're working so hard you're putting your heart and soul into this homeschooling thing and to like to let go of that is tr- yeah. it's hard yeah I can't sure. I mean it's I can imagine 
Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I agree. It feels like part of our family identi- identity. Yeah, and right, I mean, it right. still is because my other two are yeah, still yeah, homeschooling. Yeah, sure. But um, I, I, I had, a, I, let, we'll just say I had a really hard time with it at first. There was a lot of tears for mm-hmm. me, <laughs> like just mm-hmm. because also, and you know, I know everybody feels this way about her, their kids, but she's so special, you know, and I right. like love being with her and I love like lazy mornings and reading aloud and <laughs> like, it's all like grieving the growing and changing process like, right. for me. Yeah, for and sure. so, so and, anyway. Yeah. And just to know you, you <laughs> I mean, I, I sorry to interrupt, but like, I just want to encourage you, like your family identity can still be strong and you know, oh, I know. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> I but know. you have to it's it's like a mind shift though, for sure. Like changing your idea of having this family in a different yeah. way. It's a different yeah. way, but you can still for have sure. it, right? Totally. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Know. So this has been like, you know, almost a year long process for I, me, oh, like getting gosh. used to this idea. Yeah. Um she on the other hand, I have to say, like, I'm really proud of her because this is kind of what I've been working towards as a homeschooler. Yeah. And what I mean is I wanted her to take charge of her learning mm-hmm. and she mm-hmm. has up until now and she still is, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And so this is like kind of what I'm promoting is that I want you to like, um, do things that light you on fire and what are you really interested in and take charge right. of this. And that's what she's doing. Right. And so how can I like, say no to that or you know know. like how can I fault her for that really and she found a great school she's um she's really into theater so this is a like school where she can do lots of theater so I think um I think that it's gonna be great it's gonna be great for her in it maybe it won't be but it'll be a great experience either way I don't you know I don't know how the experience is gonna be but it's gonna be a good learning experience either way either way it's so true she's you know her point was like I don't want to homeschool all the way through and then realize later, oh, I should have tried high school. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. I should have tried it. At least tried it. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I cannot disagree with that. I know. Exactly. I get it. It's so true. And really, you're doing the thing that you, that we really preach on this podcast, which is, um, I think our episode, a couple episodes ago, was like, you know, the power of self-evaluation. And it's mm. so important to validate your kid's own self-evaluation. And if this is where she feels like this is the right thing for me, I mean. I know. There's success. That, there's, it's, all, it's perfect. It's, it's success great. success for you. Way to go. <laughs> I mean, you did it. I know. I know. <laughs> the The hard thing is like, we're homeschooling without her, which yeah, is just yeah. like yeah. sad yeah, for me. For you know, sure. like that's just really sad. And then also the, the, oh, another hard part is just giving up the freedom. Like we, yeah. um, we're now tied to a school schedule, yeah. you know, like we're tied to, she needs to be somewhere every day and get home from somewhere every day yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Ugh. And then like, I was, you know, looking up school breaks and like, oh, like school supplies and uh, oh like all gosh. the things, you know, that I have enjoyed not having to think about. Oh my gosh. The freedom like, of that. Oh my gosh. I know. I, I think that would probably be my hardest. The hardest That's thing the, for was me. The hardest. Oh it was gosh. the hardest. It's oh. like, I now have to think about like, oh, you only get if this many days off at Christmas and yeah, you yeah. only get like a week for spring break and you know you I guess that's I when know. we're going on vacation right I know like, guess I guess we're... we're going on vacation at that yeah, on that week yeah and I, I mean I know this is what everybody most people in the U.S. deal with so I know <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay it's just but... it's just um I'm actually really excited for her to try something new yeah but I just also like I'm super sentimental and I just yeah, like had yeah. this realization I've only got four more years left mm-hmm. with her and I know every parent talks about that right, so I'm like right. I'm, this is not an original thought but I'm just like um I thought I had all this time mm-hmm. like homeschooling mm-hmm. I don't know it kind of lulled me into this like we've got so much time together we're hanging out together all the time and and then all of a sudden I'm hit with, oh my gosh, no, we only have four years left. And, yeah. <laughs> and I know that's not even and, true either. And even because, less because now she's at school. <laughs> I know. I know. And I know like um, it's not always so black and white like that. I know. But it I isn't. just, I'm just like. 
kind of sentimental, but well, also really excited for her. It'll be really interesting. I think the transition is hard too. And I think I mean, it'll be interesting to mm -hmm. hear what you have to say a month into this or I know. six months into it, a year, because it might be like, oh, this was the best thing or maybe not. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. it'll be, it'll, um, I think things will come into focus too a little more as you yep. go through it. Yep, I, I totally agree. It's the anticipation yes. is always the worst for me. Yeah. Once we get into something, then I'm usually okay. Yeah, but right, this right. has been like a year long anticipation for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so And that's that that can be so hard. That's really hard. Yeah. It's a long yeah. time. It is. To be thinking about it. So, so well, we wish you well and your daughter and we can't I can't wait to get more updates on how it's yeah, going thanks and I will definitely you know I Instagrammed about this and I got some messages from people saying please continue to share like how this goes mm -hmm. because actually a lot of you have kids in school mm -hmm. you know um there is a good chunk of you that have kids in school or some of your kids are in school or you've done school or you're considering it or whatever yep. we're not um you know I'm not like a homeschool uh die hard i mean i yeah i love well, yeah school, but I think, i'm not yeah yeah i, I think am, just like anything um you know which we talk about a lot on our podcast which is like let's not just only identify with one thing i mean mm. we we identify with like having a great learning experience for each kid you know like yeah um, wanting yeah. our kids to love learning and that doesn't always fit into one category it doesn't always fit into homeschool it doesn't mm. always fit into you know montessori or charlotte mason or classical you know like it kind of mm -hmm. does maybe in all those or one might really jive with you one mm -hmm. thing you know or your kid but we don't fit into boxes like human beings yeah. don't fit into boxes that another like human being probably like came up with. And so mm -hmm. I, I think it's great to be open minded. It's it's what we you know, what we hope for in this world, really, too. Yeah. Just to yeah. be open to what's right. Yep. So I will continue to share how things are going um, as, you know, like with it, with some limits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Because it's her story. Yes. But I will not, you know, like I'll continue to just give little updates about how it's going because I know that there are a lot of you who are in similar situations. So, yeah. Yep, for sure. Yes. All right. Um, We are going to have you listen in on a, one of our favorite conversations from mm. the past. This one is about non traditional homeschool resources. So, this is all about uh, things that you're not even thinking about that you're probably using and doing using around your house for homeschool that um, you're not probably having to buy but mm -hmm. just like you already have it and right, it's working right. for you helping you in homeschool and and we want to just give you credit for like yeah. the, the stuff that you don't think is actually a learning tool it probably is a learning tool <laughs> yep. or it might be something simple that you can even just pick up at you know at target or on amazon that's like you wouldn't think oh, I need to go buy this for homeschool this year. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. something you can use around the kitchen or, you know, things like that. Like you're like, this doesn't seem like a learning tool, but, you know, we want to give you credit for all the things you're doing all day long. Yeah. And actually, you just reminded me, I think we have an Amazon shop with the non-traditional homeschool resources. Oh, in that's it. right. So we'll put a link <laughs> to that in the show notes if you are interested in getting anything that we talk about. So. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we will come back after that conversation t with all new LTWs. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. So today we are going to talk about non-traditional homeschool resources. Mm -hmm. Because yes. like a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. you posted something on Instagram. Yes. About getting a stove. <laughs> yep. Your, sto your new stove which, arrived. Yeah, which was, we didn't want to do that. This is all just a big accident. We didn't <laughs> plan for a new stove. But it did get me um, thinking about how important that stove was, not even really just for me, because I'm fine with not cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have an Instant Pot. Yep. I can I can do a lot in that. But yep. um, it really kind of threw a wrench in our homeschool because I have a couple of kids who really like to be in the kitchen cooking or baking. Yeah. A lot. So Right. So you posted on Instagram that your stove was a non-traditional homeschool resource and yeah, invited yeah. other people to share theirs. And the response was kind of overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. And so we thought we should really talk about this. Yeah. 
Definitely. Why we use non-traditional resources Mm -hmm. and what are some things we use. And I just want to give a little caveat because one thing we try to do on this podcast is not make you, not inspire you to go buy a bunch of things. Like we, we do not want you to walk away going, oh, and now my Amazon cart just grew. Exactly. Um, or make you feel like you have to. And so yeah. the point of this is really to just get you to notice things around your own house that you are already using and yes. to count it in your own mind. Like this counts. This is good. Yes. And I think we we try to do this so much in our podcast. Um, and really, I think we're kind of talking you out of buying a lot of curriculum. <laughs> so we're doing, <laughs> you know, kind of hopefully. Because I think curriculum is great in so many scenarios. I think it does work. And, you know, for some people more than others. and for But for some people, I don't think it, you know, it does work always. So, you know, it, that is just, this is where we talk about you need to do what's best for your family. Um, on the other hand, I think that... We homeschoolers, in general, think we have to do curriculum more, and then all this other great, rich learning stuff kind of gets pushed aside, mm-hmm. and then we don't give it its its due value. Right. There are so many things we do every single day in our life that if we just gave them the value that they really deserve, um, we... It, that might be it for you for homeschooling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, if we all really realized how important and good these things are, you might just throw out a lot of, you know, the other traditional things that you're doing. Right. Or, or you you know, like you said, you have to do what's best for you. Or yep. you might have a mix yes. of traditional and non-traditional. I know I that's me, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, or you might just be completely traditional. Yes. And that's good too. So you have to know right, yourself. Right. You really right. have to know yourself and embrace that. And <laughs> yeah. like not hear what somebody else is doing and think that you need to do that, but hear what works for you. Listen yeah. to yourself yeah. and what works for you and embrace that. And for that. your kids and for yeah. your kids too. Yeah. I think that is, that's a challenge for me because, um, you know, if, if it were up to me, I would have just done it this one certain way. I would have just done hun- homeschooling this one way and I have... I'm just learning to listen to my kids and hear what, and, and just notice, watch them. I'm, you know, I'm studying my kids more. And the more I do that, I just pick up on so many things where they really are learning. Yeah. And then I just, I want to do more of those things. Right. So, right. Okay. So yeah, we thought we'd start with why, Mm -hmm. why we think this is important um, or why we embrace yeah, yeah. These types of resources. Yeah. Um, I'll start. I'll start for me. Go for um, it. One reason that I think it's important is because I really want to embrace the typical life stuff. Yeah. Like learning how to cook, learning how to clean, learning yes. how to be, um, talk to others in your family, <laughs> learning how to, um navigate relationships, Mm -hmm. um, learning how to work hard, you know, things, things, uh, more of the, the stuff that you don't traditionally think about when you think about school. Right. right. Um, I want to embrace that kind of stuff in our life. And so a lot of these resources kind of fall into that category for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just as as important or more important. Actually, I think it's probably the most important thing right, that I want right. my kids to learn or to get out of being homeschooled. Right, right. I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's authentic learning. It's like learning from actual real life instead of, you know, reading from a, a, a you know, maybe a textbook or something that talked about real life. So it's it's like, it's a direct learning instead of a second hand almost. Right. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Uh, how about you? Do you have any other reasons why? Yeah, I do. Um, I think um, high interest activities um, fosters learning. I think just the more we care about something, the more we want to know about it, the more we are going to learn about it. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so like think about cooking. I know that I know we have both have 
a few kids who really like to cook. I think they learn so much about math, like you said, real life, um, serving their family in, you know, special ways, um, seeing an activity go from, you know, or a, you know, a project go from start to end. Yeah. Um, so many things reading i mean reading researching yep uh so many things planning yeah ordering you know grocery shopping so many things so i just think like that they're learning so much there and um that i just think they they could do maybe a math worksheet which i think sometimes needs to happen at times too but um to be able to pair it with a real life activity like that is just, I mean, it's just, I think it's priceless. Right. For sure. Yeah. So, um, another reason that why I do this or why, yeah. why I'm embracing these types of resources is mm -hmm. because I want our home where mm -hmm. we're homeschooling. I want it to feel inviting and cozy Yes. And so I want um, the environment or the setting or um, like how like I want them to have warm memories. And this is probably my my um, part <laughs> of my personality, personality. Yes, part of my personality. Sure. But I want them to have warm memories of homeschooling. And so mm -hmm. I want so a lot of the things that I do that are on my list are because I want to have less of a like. Um, functional, practical environment, mm -hmm. but more mm -hmm. of a inviting, fun, warm environment. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any um, more? Yeah. Okay. So I also think I this kind of, these all really do blend together. They go together. <laughs> so it's going to be, yeah, it's just going to be a great conversation, I think. But um, I think we've talked about this so many times. Connection is the foundation of learning also. Like if, if our kids are feeling loved and heard and their basic, you know, lots of their basic needs are taken care of, all those things, like learning just happens. Um, and so even um, beyond the actual activity that you're doing, yep. um, I just think the capability of learning increases exponentially by having these um, real life just not, you know, the non-traditional um, uh, school experiences. Yeah. Um, I think just it, it creates connection. Everybody's excited and happy usually when mm -hmm. we're doing these things. So yep. um, it just naturally creates correction, connection, which naturally leads to lots of learning. Right. Yeah. So, That's great. Yeah. How about you? Um, okay. My last one is a little mm -hmm. bit separate, but a lot of the things on my list that I use for non-traditional resources mm -hmm. are in order to coerce my kids to go outside. Yes. To make getting outside seem enticing and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's so on my list too, for was sure. it? Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like probably half of the things I do are for that, for that okay. reason, because I really believe I, I mean, I think it's important. My kids are getting older and, you know, they're 13, 11, and 9. Yeah. And it's hard to get them outside sometimes, especially mm -hmm. we live in Minnesota, so it can be cold. Yeah. And so when they were younger, they would go outside and, like, do imaginative play. Yes. For hours. Yes. And now that they're older, they don't do that. They need, um, like, more physical type things to do mm -hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to make sure we have enough of that. So there's sure. no excuses. <laughs> That's so good. And I mean, and fresh air is also just so good for oh, yeah. your brain. Yeah. I mean, and your body, your health. I mean, it's just, Everything. it has so many benefits. So yep. to do activities out there is just, it's another priceless thing. It's right. just so priceless. So yep. good job. Good. Um, I also think I just like to have fun. I yeah. personally, this is my personality coming out. I have to have fun in my life or it's just, I mean, it, it's real hard for me to move on. <laughs> so um, I just think all these, these things that we're going to talk about are just more fun. There's just a more fun way to learn. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think I just, I want my kids to have that for the rest of their lives too. Right. Right. You want them to enjoy and be excited about what they're doing. Yes. 
And so yep. you yep. need more things to make that happen. Yeah. 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 And then my last one too, I think we've talked about pretty much all of my other reasons, but this last one is just that I think when you're physically moving your body, you also learn more. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, there's so many things that happen in your brain when you're moving. Yeah. Um, and all these things I think that we're going to talk about are definitely body movers. Yeah. So for sure. Just win, win, right. win, win all around. All right. Should we talk about what we are using? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Let's kind of start with some outside things. Yeah. Um, Marin, do you have some non-traditional resources for outside that you like to use? Yes, definitely. This is one of my favorites. And we, every year at Christmas, we give our kids something that mm. they have to use outside. Yep. Um, so that they also, so that um, something exciting corresponds with being outside yeah like Chris, Christmas gift is being corresponding with outside so I want them to think of it as a great thing um yeah sorry so ahead. even if they're not going to be able to use it because it's yes yeah. snowy it's yep. snowy but sometimes they are sometimes they're sleds or yep. skates yep. or something but yep. a lot of times it is something for the summer too so okay it's fine um well, one of the things this is it was has not been a Christmas present but one thing we just got which we <laughs> often get uh, is a fire pit or mm. a fire ring or something because I have one child who would have a fire going all day long mm -hmm. every single day yeah and just feed the fire and cook everything on the fire I mean it's just it's his very favorite thing in the world so yeah and it has been for years so um that's been so good and good for you for embracing that Mm -hmm. because was that always easy for you or no, it was very scary for yeah. me yeah. especially at the beginning because he was, was actually younger too mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. really young I remember that yep yeah yeah and so. so I was really scared about it but I also thought well I need to monitor him while he's doing this obviously but <laughs> at this point in his life I kind of need to monitor him doing everything so I might as well do it where he's you know yeah. most comfortable most himself yeah. And it was at the fire pit. So any other outside stuff, Angela? Yeah. Okay. So we did just buy sleds mm -hmm. on purpose mm -hmm. um, because I know winter's coming and I went to Costco and of course they were there. Yes. Yeah. Costco reminds us what's Costco coming. Costco reminds us. Um, and, and you always want to get things at Costco when you first see them because exactly. they might not be there next time. Exactly. So we went in, Jeremy and I were alone. Oh, we had no kids. Wow. I know. And I was like, please go to Costco with me because I hate going. Oh, and I yeah. said, I only have nine things on the list. So we're going to be in and out. Yeah. But then we saw the sleds and I was like, I have to get these now because yeah. when I think I need them, which is like mid-December, uh, all the stores are going to be out of the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I need to get good ones because I haven't gotten good ones in years and our other ones are like falling apart. So yes, we got, we, I am well prepared for sledding this year. We have a little bit of a hill and so... <laughs> Even yeah. my big kids still like sledding, so I'm oh, set there. So great. Way to go! Yeah, Way to thanks, go. thanks. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's important to me is outdoor seating. Oh, Just yes. Just because I want them to, I want all of us to be able to, if it's nice and out, nice enough out, do what we're doing inside, outside. Yes, absolutely. So I try and put the seating out there, and yeah. that did. That did work. I mean, I had kids, it's too cold now and it's been raining. But prior to this, I would have kids get up and go sit out there, yeah. like yeah. with a blanket in the morning Ugh. and maybe listen so to their iPod great. or whatever. So, so awesome. Yeah. So that was a real, that's another really important thing to me. Just being sitting outside is so good for people. It is yes. so good. And you can be still doing the same thing. Yeah. Same school thing. You were yeah. doing inside, so just true. doing it outside. Yep. Yeah, it's just your senses are all just lit up, I think. For sure. When you're outside. So that's just great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, my other thing, you know, for outside is just the correct outdoor gear uh, mm. to wear mm. for every type of weather. Yeah. And it seems like such a small thing, like a no-brainer, like, well, yeah, of course. But I feel like if it's not quite right, it really, really is hard to get my kids outside. Mm -hmm. So, and I... I don't always like to get them exact, you know, as parents, we, we don't want to just give them what they want all the time. So sometimes I'm like, listen, you just need to deal with it right now. But for this, to get them outside, no, I want to get the right things for them. 
I want them to feel comfortable and happy when they're outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, for example, um, I have a, a child who really likes, ch- you know, these like cheap shoes from Target, right? It, they're her favorite. Um, but but when we go on, go hiking, they are so uncomfortable. So I spent money and got her good hiking shoes yeah. just for hiking, just for hiking. Yep. Um, because I really want her to love that. Yeah. Because it's really important to us to right. go hiking. So I was so inspired um, by that last time we went camping because I saw mm-hmm. her in that. And mm-hmm. we had like a combination of winter boots slash tennis shoes and neither were appropriate because it was like kind of slippery wet i know and uh, i think some of my kids wore the winter boots and some wore tennis shoes and we got wet and we slipped around and i thought i know it would be really nice if we all had hiking boots we don't but i don't well my other three kids didn't have hiking yeah (laughs) so now i'm thinking maybe we should but here's my hack for that is to go get them on eBay. Oh, yeah. Um, because we love Keens. Yep. The Keen brand, um, both for summer hiking shoes and now these, this is our first pair of winter or kind of, you know, like cold weather hiking shoes. And they are so great. And if you know what size to get, that's the thing. You want to make sure you've tried them on somewhere first. But then eBay is such a great place to buy things like that. Yeah, You are such a proponent of eBay. I yes. am. I'm strong. Do you strong do the um? Do you do the auctions or do you just do the buy it? Uh, I try to just do the buy it now, and that's but. becoming more popular. Okay. Too. So. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. I also just bought a pair of Boggs boots for my youngest daughter off of eBay too. Okay. Because they're just th- that's another thing where it's just this is great gear for my kids. She loves to wear, um. Puddle boots, we call them puddle boots. Yeah, you know? <clears throat> yeah. And hers are just falling apart, and so, and it's just, I she needs a good pair of those, and she will be outside like all the time. Yeah, as soon as she has a good pair. So. I have to say, this is a really hard one though, too, because there are so many. Like right now, I think, wouldn't it be nice if we all had rain gear and rain boots? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then but when in we two go weeks hiking, from now. I know. And so I feel like <laughs> there are so much gear you could buy, so and then gear. kids grow and their sizes change, and so it's just, it's a. It's a really tricky puzzle. You're it's, right. And yeah. In, in the past, we've done a lot of swapping with families. And mm. I mean, we get a lot of stuff from you guys. And yeah. <laughs> your, <laughs> your kids are a little bit older than ours. Well, um, you know, and so it's good to have, it's good to find families who I know you can work with on that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think. And then just buy used. Yeah, for sure. Uh, or just pick the one activity you that's like maybe the most important and just do that right take care of that one right you know for sure or the thing that's the hardest for your kid to get out and do um the other outdoor thing that's sort of outdoor that i wanted to talk Mm -hmm. about is our state park pass for camping yeah oh my god that i'm counting um definitely and like camping gear i did um update a few things this year from our yeah. camping gear yeah. on purpose to make that more enjoyable for everybody. And so I am totally counting that as homeschool. Yeah. The great thing is now that, you know, we, we are camping at yep. camper cabins once a month and I love it because I don't have to worry about a tent anymore. For sure. <laughs> <Really. laughs> I know. Tents are not fun to keep up with. I don't like no. that. I don't like that. So no, but anyway, but tents might be your thing. So <laughs> I think I, I count it as homeschooling. Bless sure. you if it is. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move indoor. Okay. All right. Do you have, what do you have? Oh, so many, I mean, so many indoor things. Well, first of all, all our whole kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> all the cooking utensils. Yeah. And there's, I have more cooking utensils now than I ever have only because of my kids. I mean, I'm a middle, a minimalist when it comes to cooking yeah, utensils. Yeah. I've, I, you know, have gotten rid of so many things. For sure. But now that I have kids who are like, ooh, this would be great if we could, you know, zest the lemons. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, let's get a lemon zester. I'm fine with it. Right? Because it's going to, you know, it's their thing. Yeah, so, for sure. I'm okay with it, I guess. <laughs> for sure. I was going to say the other day I bought a, because my son, I want him to cook like healthy food for himself mm-hmm. and he will, but he only likes certain things. And mm-hmm. so 
he really wants to be able to chop onions. Oh, wow. And chop, like, vegetables together. But I, our old food processor was huge and, like, clunky, mm-hmm. and then it broke. Yep. And then we have a Vitamix. That You mean you can put, like, onions and vegetables and stuff in that, but it's not sure. that easy. And I was like, we need a medium-sized food processor. Like, yes. perfect for his yes. hands, like, that he can operate and he Aww. can put his vegetables in there. So I w- went and bought... And a medium, it was kind of hard to find, a (laughs) medium-sized food processor just for him. Like you, I feel like I'm trying to get rid of appliances. I don't need need more appliances. But I also, (laughs) if this is going to help him, like, cook his own food. Oh, I I want to do it. That's so true. Have you ever used one of those, a manual hand chopper? I used um, to have one. And that was one of the things I gave away when I was getting rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. You use that? Um, well, my kids have gone through seasons where they use that like every, oh. several times a day. Okay. I mean, we're out of that season right now, but I feel like it's going to come back. Okay. Yeah. Where it's just, I mean, I have kids who are like kind of obsessed with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> they just chop veggies and they'll eat them all. Just. Really? Yeah. Because they chopped them. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay. I know. I know. Yeah. All right. Um, another thing that I like to make sure we have for homeschool is uh, specific cleaning supplies mm. that are great for kids and easy for kids to use. Yeah. So it's always like bottle spray bottles of vinegar and water. Yep. For pretty much anything. Yep. Um, for laundry, we have started using the laundry little pods oh yeah mm-hmm. so because they're easy to use yep there's no spilling yep of anything ever and no yes. frustration you throw them in that's all so um yeah. things like that oh a squeegee like a window squeegee thing mm. just mm-hmm. it's out and available i use okay so this is jogging my mind <laughs> um we for laundry that's why i started buying powdered laundry soap uh-huh. like 10 yeah. years ago for yes. that reason, and now we still do, and then also wipes. I buy the cleaning oh, wipes. Oh yes, because guess what? Stuff gets cleaned actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I as much as you really don't want to use those things. I, I know, know you don't because I, I know you don't. don't. I don't want to use them. I was <laughs> no. like, we have enough rags and spray mm-hmm. bottles, but mm-hmm. nobody wants to use those. Yeah. So yeah. I buy the wipes for uh, the kids. I should do that. I I have not really. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, another great thing for home that I count as homeschool supplies is the correct, <laughs> I'm not going to say correct, correct for each kid type of clothing and pajamas and like slippers mm. Mm. and blankets, like conducive to learning. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Being comfortable and able to listen. That's what I was kind to of. a book or something. <laughs> that's what I was meaning when I said, um cozy like I want the house to be cozy yes yeah I want yes. them to feel like they mm-hmm. like being here because this is comfortable yes. yes yeah that's a good one I really like that I also had on my list and I don't know how else to label this so I'm just mm-hmm. calling it like cozy college furniture <laughs> so like <laughs> college that's great so like when Target has the back to yeah. college yeah sale in August. Like, okay. if it's like a beanbag or a yeah. cool chair or like yes. uh, something that folds out. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. They love that. They'll anything read on that with, thing. Anything with some interesting storage in it <laughs> is real, real. It's like high interest. <laughs> yeah. People don't know I could put something back here. <laughs> Back or something. Yeah. My kids yeah. love that kind of stuff. Another thing for being cozy mm-hmm. is good tea that my kids like to drink and mugs. Oh, yes. And now Huge. they're kind of getting into coffee. <laughs> Sorry. So What's I'm that allowing a, that to. Could have been our fault. <laughs> no, it's mostly tea because that's what we mostly have. And then mm-hmm. coffees every once in a while. Because mm-hmm. I don't I don't drink coffee, so I don't bring the coffee maker out. But every yeah. once in a while, they'll remember. And then that's a real treat. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, and... And a little hand frother. Great. That is mm-hmm. so great. Yeah, That's, they're, they're into is, that. <laughs> I think we're talking about Hige here. <laughs> but <laughs> I think we might be. It's winter's coming. <laughs> I think we might so. be. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Another great thing we have for our home is a karaoke machine. Mm. And I'm counting that as homeschool. Why? Because they read the words. <laughs> They're reading the words, and that that really does it promotes a lot of fluency in reading. Yeah, good for you. I need to dig ours out again. Yes. You wow. Do yeah. And you just okay. So basically, all you need for that is a microphone and an and an iPad or a computer or something. Yeah, because something. You can look up karaoke we, songs. Exactly. We just look up on YouTube, and then you're just singing them into a microphone. Right. Right. Basically. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. That's awesome. I love that. They don't even know. They're learning. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. One other thing I forgot to say about outside that we just got. Oh, yes. Is, um, you know, we get lots of snow here. And Mm -hmm. last year we had one shovel. Oh, my goodness. Shovels. I know. Yes. So this year I told Jeremy, I was like, we need to make sure we have one for each child. Definitely. Because when it snows, we need all hands on deck. (laughs) <laughs> everybody totally. needs to get out because last year it was like one working and the other two playing or watching oh, oh, <laughs> and then, ouch, they'd, ouch. then they'd switch yeah yeah, yeah. so we did just and, invest in new shovels and honestly even if they don't get very far it doesn't it's matter fine. it's the process it's the process exactly yeah. yeah okay now this is gonna be this is gonna sound a little controversial but i think a non-traditional homeschool item it, items are books and I'll hear is just hear me out. Okay. I do feel like most of the time homeschool curriculum or even, I mean, public school curriculum, it's not really about a literature necessarily. It's about, um, or it's the focus is, you know, p- pulling apart literature maybe, or, and I think that's so, so good. But I think just having a plethora of books where you can just, just sit down and read yeah. just for pleasure. Mm-hmm is really a homeschool tool. It's huge. And I think it gets very, very underplayed or undervalued. I agree. I think I agree with you. I think it's non-traditional in the public school sense. Yes. Yes. I think a lot of homeschoolers are into books. Yes. Yes, for sure. (laughs) I think so too. But I also think that we can sometimes get distracted by all the things you have to do with the book oh yeah you know yeah get do the copy work let's have some discussion questions about it and I think those are all so good and valuable and yet there is something so important about picking your own book and just reading it for yourself for sure and not having to answer to anyone else about it for sure yeah yeah so I agreed and I guess this is why I also non-traditional, I guess what I would say audible are audiobooks. Yes. Was for that on sure. your list? Yeah. Yep. I mean, th- this is all going to go with like either iPods or speakers or... Oh, you have a you whole know. category. Okay. Well, I mean, it could be. But I mean, it all kind of goes together, right? It's, yeah. you know, a way to listen to audiobooks. Right. I feel like they're not valued mm-hmm. as much as, you know, they should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel for like, sure. Yeah, I feel like it's a way to get your kids interested in literature or interested in a good book. Yes. And, and so that it, seems like seems like a small thing that you just quickly get if you as soon as you get them interested, then you can start learning hardcore for now on. But that's I think that's not what that's not the point. The point is to continue um this love. You have to continue to in- entice them and get them excited about reading all the time it's not just like Mm -hmm. this one little task you have to get through to do everything else it's continuous it's all the time right and so I think audiobooks are just so good for that for sure yeah okay and so then you want to talk about your speakers and your ipods or do you just mentioning them enough um well I mean we could talk about them we've talked about them a lot on here but I think it's worth worth talking about again because they're so important so my kids all have uh, iPod touches, which was a very conscious decision for us. I don't think it's for everyone. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. Um, because for lots of reasons they have, they, it's a screen, right? Yep. Um, we definitely, uh, limit what's on that screen. It's, it's really mostly limited to things they can listen to. So audiobooks, And then we also let them listen to music on there. Um, and as they're getting older, we're adding a few more things maybe, yep, you know, yep. but, um, but it's just, uh, we, we knew early on that our kids were auto, most of our kids were very, very audible learners or audio learners. That's yep. their, I mean, their strongest, 
Um, and so we just knew from, from a very early age that that was going to be important to us. And so, um, we, we invested in those. Yeah. And get ear and ear, earbuds too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And they get used, man. They get used so much. They get used. Yep. And so another way to listen to those, you know, to audiobooks are on speakers. We like, we have an Alexa, uh, Alexa speaker from Amazon. Those are great because that really hooks up to Audible. So you can just say, you know, Alexa, play yep. whatever book and it'll play right from your Audible list, which is really awesome. Yep. It makes learning so much or, you know, listening Listen. to audiobooks so much easier. Right. Right. Yeah. Those are those are great ideas. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, Byron, what else do you have um, kind of tech related? Um, well, I, we have been utilizing YouTube a lot for learning this okay. fall, which I've talked about a little bit where we watch, we've been watching CNN 10 and real life lore on YouTube. Yes. Most mornings, I'd say maybe over half morning of the mornings we do that. So, um, and they're very short and it's just a great little shot of learning. Yeah. So we're loving great. that. Great. Yeah. Where do you do that? Like on a main TV or do you have we, a laptop or? Yes, we're, we're watching it on a TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was important for us to do that because we have, four, well, there's five of us. We yeah. can't even fit around a laptop anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Four kids. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about you, Angela? Any, any other, um, any other non-traditional learning items? Okay. Well, one thing we've invested in this year in particular, because I've made a commitment to getting out in the afternoon is memberships to places. Mm. Now I've done this before. I've gotten some here and there before, and I've not really used them that much Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm an introvert and I like staying You'd home. You'd rather stay home. Yeah. I'd rather stay home. Yeah. But you know, I'm listening to my kids and they really like to get out. Right. And this is really important. Two of my kids especially like to get out. And so I need to be more okay with that. And so we are doing more of that. And so I got a, mm-hmm. um, in Minnesota, we have a history, the history, history, history Minnesota Historical Society. That's yes. what it is. Yes. Okay. So you can get a membership there. And then, yeah. and then within that you get free, free um, admission to like 20 places or yeah. something. Yeah. So I think we're going to be utilizing that. Um, like I said, the state parks. Yes. Um, and then a couple other museums that my kids love to go to. We're doing that yeah, too. Yeah, great. That is yeah. so wonderful. And that's all learning. And I do count that like, and also on that thread, I would say sometimes we decide, are we going to spend money on a membership or on like a class or something like, Oh yeah. You know, do you want to take swimming lessons or, mm-hmm. you know, cooking class or whatever? So I mean, sometimes we make a decision between those two things. Yeah. Um, but they're all, that's all learning. It's all for sure. Good, yeah. Yeah. So great. Uh, how about you? Um, my la- the last thing that I thought of was just games. Oh yeah, so many games, so many ways to learn, and I think all kids, a lot of kids love games, but I also think that we as parents don't always um, give them value in you know in their learning. And sometimes it's a video game, sometimes mm. it's a board game. So yeah. you know, it's kind of so, hard, kind of kind of hard when it's on a screen too to. Be like, yeah, that's good, but it is good of, though. Sometimes it is. So much good stuff is happening, and what my kids are doing mm-hmm. online. Yep. So yep. yeah, it it is hard to count that, but we have to remember that yep. it's really really good. So right. I love yeah. that. It's just good to have a balance, kind of. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we wanted to briefly talk about a few good ones that people yes. mentioned. One that somebody mentioned um, in our Instagram stories was mm-hmm. siblings. Great. <laughs> Great I was, learning. I was like, that is the best because they are learning so much about relationships mm-hmm. and navigating hard things. Yes. And yeah. it, that is probably my top resource. <laughs> I think that's so great. Now, if you only have one child, you're still doing so much. So. I you're mean, st- you're still navigating relationships. Still navigating a lot <laughs> of relationships. Sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yes. But oh my gosh. But yes, yeah, siblings are so great. Also under that category, maybe. I yeah. don't know if that's the same category, but pets. I was going to say, yeah, same okay. category. Yes. Loved that answer. I loved that. I thought, yes. I mean, that is one of the reasons why we got a dog. And I, I, am, I have always been very resistant to pets because of the commitment level. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's been good. 
It is a commitment. <laughs> it, it definitely is. Oh, I loved gardens. Having a oh, garden. Oh, yeah. What a great learning experience. People in who do so that ways. are amazing. Yes, they are. Way to go. Oh, um, another great one was recycling. Now, we've done this a lot in the past. We've used recycling so much as a learning resource. Yeah. And that's free. You've you've done that. I've oh, my seen goodness. You. you and your boxes. Boxes and then, I mean, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Paper towel rolls. Egg cartons, uh, I mean, packaging of any sort, so many things, jars, straws. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I could go on. But, I mean, there are so many things. We we have had, you know, portions of our house just, like, kind of closed off for, like, big projects that are happening mm -hmm. because of yes, recycling. So, yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, Somebody said car schooling with a car hotspot for Net Netflix science documentaries. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about car hotspots, but I'm assuming in like a year I'm going to look back <laughs> and laugh at this comment that I don't know anything about car hotspots, but I don't right now, but it sounds really cool. Yes. Um, does that mean that it, cars are coming with going to have screens again? I you don't know. They, they don't have yeah, because they kind of went out of them for a while. you just and watch it on your iPad? I don't know, but I like that. But yeah, that's great. I like that because it's a shared screen. This is I've I've been I've been kind of missing shared screens lately, which I never thought I would because I used to complain about having a TV on and now I kind of wish our whole family would just like watch one thing together cuz it's something that we share and then we yeah, can talk about sure. it more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So that is I think that's great. I liked I liked one person said pretty much our entire lifestyle. <laughs> and I think you've got it. You've got it. You get yes. you get that our kids are learning all the time. Way to go. I think that's so great. All right. I love that. And again, this is just to remind you that you probably already are doing so many of these things. So it's just getting you to like the mind place where you can count those things and feel yeah. good about what you're doing and not that you need to go out and buy a bunch of stuff that we just talked about. Right. And these are the things we really like. I mean, these are the things I really like. And Angela, you listed things you really like to do. And so you personally are going to have your own list. It might look totally different than ours. For sure. And we'd love to hear those things. Yeah. Because <laughs> that could yes. inspire a lot of people. I think it right. has already. Yes. So, yes. I loved reading everybody's comments, and so I am hopeful when we post this episode that we'll get some more comments from people. Yes. Oh, can't wait. All right. Let's move on to loving this week. All right. LTW, Angela, what are you loving this week? Okay. It is fall, mm -hmm. and it is that time of year when we um, are more prone to colds and sicknesses, and so I try to up our elderberry um, usage. Mm -hmm. And I know I shared before, I think it was a past LTW, my homemade elderberry syrup. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, Which I love. Mm -hmm. I still make homemade elderberry syrup um, and still use it a lot. But my kids, I realized they're more likely to take elderberries syrup if it's in gummy form mm, mm -hmm. and so I've started buying these elderberry gummies That's because great. it's easier especially like when my kids are sick and I want them to take the elderberry syrup like every two hours I know it's easier to get them to take a gummy than it is to make them go to the fridge and take a spoon oh, and yeah. drink the syrup which is not a big deal either but for some reason it's a stumbling block so yeah, for sure I started buying these elderberry gummies and I love them because it tastes like a tastes like a fruit a fruit what's it called a fruit, you know. Yeah. A fruit, fruit snack. Fruit, fruit snack. snack. Yes. It's like a fruit snack. Like, I was thinking, what is it? Gummy worms. <laughs> I was thinking gummy worms. Anyway, yeah. No. Yeah. Tastes like a fruit Gummy snack. Bears. Yeah. And the other good thing about this is you can travel with it. Yes. So if you're traveling. Very easy. Or Which is why I'm putting it on my list right now. My yes. Amazon list. So these are just called Sambuco Black Elderberry oh. Gummies. Okay. I will put them in our Amazon shop and then a link in our show notes. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. I think they're like $10 Great. for a jar of them. Um, and we use them a lot. So I would, I would highly recommend when you get sick, this is what we do when we get sick. 
Well, I take the elderberry syrup like preventatively, but then if you start to feel like an itchy throat, take elderberries like every two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, Syrup or the gummies or whatever. And usually it kicks it for me. Do you, do you ever, do you um, also use the the apple cider vinegar the i don't anymore the you fire don't cider? fire cider no. Mm. no do you um well we get forms of that from oh. from uh whole foods a lot oh okay and yeah. i feel like i don't know if it's just my husband like he he uses it a lot yeah oh good and i don't know if it's just his influence <laughs> or or if it you know you know what i mean is it like yeah. a placebo or is it really work? yeah but, but we use both of those things a lot though oh you do berry. okay but I have to say, my kids will do elderberry if it's in hot water, like tea. Elderberry mm, yeah. tea with a little honey or something. But it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. So I'm really on board with these gummies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. I will. I can get my kids to do like a tea or something like once a day. Yeah. But right. like when you they're sick, it. I really mm-hmm. want them to do it every two hours. Exactly. So... <laughs> Are you getting enough in those gummies? Like, are you getting like? A, I mean, I think so. Probably. I don't it's know. It's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. All right. What is your LTW? Okay, I am. <laughs> I'm gonna talk uh, personal items here, so get ready. Um, <laughs> I am loving a new menstrual cup. It's called Nixit, and it is s- working for me so well. I just can't even believe it. I've been using the Diva Cup for like before I since before I even had kids so like 12 plus years yeah and it's it's worked off and on and I feel like you know I've often gotten new ones as soon as I get a new one it works better um Mm. but I have to say it was time for me to get a new one and I just thought I'm just gonna try something else and Mm. I am loving the Nixit Mm. um it's just it's like a different shape it just feels better I don't feel like sometimes I think with the diva cup I even almost felt like a little bloated or something Mm. and um I don't feel that way with the Nixit um when I have it in and it's just and it's very effective it's like super effective it's working so great um and I just love it it's a great new change for me (laughs) that's awesome yeah and can I ask you some questions so there's um how is the leakage uh, it's like zero to little, like it's okay. so little. And I think it's only when it's like, uh, when it's time for me to like, you know, change it out change it. and yeah. that's when it, it might leak. But when it, um, but when I don't need to do that, it does not leak like is it at all zero, which is yeah. on what doesn't it never happened with the diva cup. I don't know if ever. Yeah. I always had a little bit of leakage always. So yeah. this is okay. way different. When you told me about this before, mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I might be convinced to try it because yeah. I um, I had a bad experience with the Diva Cup many years ago yeah. and never wanted to try <laughs> another menstrual cup again. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, but you are very convincing because you said it's a different shape, which I'm like having yes. a hard time picturing. I know. Well, go but to I'm Nixit. I'm going to go look it up. Go to <laughs> letsnixit.com. Okay. And it has it. some great information. And I think it's this is key to getting the right one for you because now there are so many menstrual cups. Like when okay. I first tra- was started using menstrual cups, there was like one or two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were both about the same. Mm. You know, and this yeah. is so there are just so many choices now. Watch the videos, um, read the instructions. And I have to tell you, the instructions, it said, you know, this may take a while for you to get used to. It might not work right away. Practice. I, the first time I used it, it took me five seconds. I'm not kidding you to get it in, get it in the right place. And it just hundred percent worked right away. That's awesome. So yeah, it is. And I have to say like when these things work for me, because I don't like dealing with this kind of stuff, you know, like, Mm. and when, once you find something that works and you don't have to think about it anymore, it's, it feels life changing to me. Like I can move on with my life now. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Wonderful. So, do you so feel thankful. it in? Because not when I would have at the, all. Not at all. No. Because did you feel the diva cup? Yeah, I know. And that I was part of my problem. Yes, I know. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And okay. sometimes, if I did it just right, I wouldn't feel it, or I didn't think I would feel it. Yeah. But then I'd take it out, and I'd be like, "Oh, that feels better." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that I don't. That's not how it is with the next. Okay. So it just okay. It just fits me better. So that's awesome. I'm sure there are lots of other shapes and sizes for the right, you know, for you. But this might be the one for you. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 
You're convincing me. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> okay. For sure. Yes. Let me know. All I right. would like to hear how you all feel about it too sometimes. So I'll I'd love to hear. i tell you maybe privately. Yeah. You maybe can message me. Anybody. <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to follow us, we are on social media at on Facebook and Instagram at Homeschool Unrefined. We have a closed Facebook group, Unrefined Homeschoolers, that we'd love to have you join. And uh, we also have a website where we keep all of our episodes are on there and then links to everything that we talked about, too. And that's homeschoolunrefined.com. And we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor, and Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things. <laughs>